Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case of Batsakis v. Demotsis. This case was heard in the Texas Court of Appeals in the year 1949. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So both our plaintiff and defendant were in what you would envision to be war-torn Greece. This was the year 1941, 1942. And in Greece at this time, there was like no money to do anything. People didn't have money to buy food. People were starving. And when people starved to death in one's family, they wouldn't even tell the authorities that someone had died because they wanted to keep that family member's ration card so that they could hopefully eat enough to survive. A really bad place to be. Uh, so our defendant in this case had some extra money. Uh, 500,000 drachmas. Drachmas are a Greek form of currency. And 500,000 drachmas amounted to about $25 US. So you can see how inflated uh, the currency was, especially at the time. So uh, our defendant, um, Demotsis, loans 500,000 drachmas to Batsas, Batsakis um, in exchange for a letter. In this letter, Batsakis wrote, um, you know, Demotsis gave me the equivalent of 2,000 US dollars. I will be repaying Demotsis 2,000 US dollars. Um, with interest at 8% uh, when I repay it, right? So they basically had entered into a loan, except for Demotsis had vastly undervalued what he gave Batsakis. Batsakis really received only $25 and Demotsis, you know, said that you owe me $2,000 now. So the question before the court was whether this was uh, amounted to consideration, whether it was fair enough to be consideration. Um, and the court wrestles with adequacy of consideration. So adequacy of consideration, whether the court wants to try and say that, you know, this wasn't sufficient consideration, $25 for $2,000. I mean, we've seen this before where there's inadequate consideration if someone gives $1 to another party for their act, you know, is that adequate enough? The court in this case rules that the $25 was adequate enough consideration. I mean, you have to take the holistic view and this is what the court was doing. Um, this might not be the case in the United States of America if someone loaned twenty-five dollars um, in, you know, hopes of being repaid two thousand. Probably wouldn't hold up. But because this was war-torn Greece, twenty-five twenty-five dollars, five hundred thousand drachmas. That was so much money um, at that time, uh, and the likelihood of Demotsis even seeing a penny of that back was so low. Um, so the court considered that, yeah, you know, under the circumstances of it being war-torn Greece, basically apocalyptic type of world, um, that was enough to satisfy consideration. So the trial court said that there was some consideration, but they didn't rule fully in favor of Demotsis. They only gave him $750, whereas the, uh, the Court of Appeals in Texas gave him the full $2,000 plus 8% interest. Um, so that's the case. Uh, the doctrine of adequacy of consideration is discussed. Um, and that's where we'll just jump into our ex-ante discussion, our policy discussion of the adequacy of consideration. You know, from the ex-post perspective, from the morality perspective, it seems like this contract should be enforced to the tune of $2,000. It doesn't seem fair um, to Batsakis, the, the borrower of the $25 US value of drachmas, um, that, you know, she'd have to repay Five hundred, you know, two thousand dollars. It's uh, it's an insane loan. It seems so sickening that someone could even enter into that. It doesn't feel just um, that we would force her to repay all that money. From the ex ante perspective, though, the adequacy uh, of consideration is something to think about in a positive light. You know, if the court didn't enforce this contract at all, uh, it's quite possible that the the borrower wouldn't have even had any opportunity to get you know, the equivalent of $25 US because she wouldn't have even been able to contract that loan. You know, the, the essence of consideration, having this legal contract that the two parties entered into, allowed this $25 loan to happen uh, because Demotsis believed that he would get repaid legally. So that's something to think about. This adequacy of consideration, if we don't enforce it, we're gonna disincentivize contracting parties to even come to agreements in the first place. Uh, this is especially prevalent in like payday loans today where, you know, people have insane interest terms, insane, you know, repayment uh, terms. And they ultimately, they, you know, you might get $1,000 and you end up paying $10,000, $15,000 back over the term of the loan, um, which seems bad. It seems immoral. Um, the argument against that, though, is that, you know, if it weren't for the adequacy of consideration doctrine and the courts upholding these contracts that are seemingly unfair, um, we really wouldn't have 
much ground to stand on. And these people that are struggling for money and do need that thousand dollars wouldn't have a venue to even go get it because the courts wouldn't enforce those contracts. So we wouldn't have lenders, you know, able to give people these loans at, at those types of rates at all. People wouldn't have the access to funds. So something to think about. Um, the key thing to extract from this case is the adequacy of consideration doctrine. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.